Good evening, fifth graders. Tonight we're going to be finding the volume of pyramids and cones. It's a lot like finding the volume of a prism or the volume of um, a cylinder, but there's one extra step you're going to have to do tomorrow in class. So watch closely. We're going to be going through um, a few examples here, and then just pay close attention about that next step you need to do. I'm going to be showing all my math tonight, so this will help prep us for our MCAs that are coming up here in the near future. First of all, here I have a cone, okay? As you can see, a cone has a circular base, just like a cylinder, right? But how it's different from a cylinder is it has an apex up top. So how do I find the volume of a cone? Well, first of all, I have to find the volume of the, or the area, I should apologize, of the base. Well, once again, that's r squared times 3.14. r squared, so we have r is 6, so r squared would be 36 times 3.14. I'm going to need some more room for that. 3.14 times 36. Like I said, I'm going to show all my math tonight. 4 times 6 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 6 times 3 is 18. I'm going to cross off this 6, put the place value holder in. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. I'm going to add these up. 4, I have a 10 here. 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 4 is 13. 9 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. Two numbers are after the decimal. I'm going to move this to 113. 0 0.04. Let's see what the next step is, kids. That's the area of the bases. Now I'm going to multiply the base times the height, just like we did with the cylinder. So make sure we do that. So I'm going to be multiplying 313.04 times 4.5. That's my height. Remember, you don't have to line decimals up when you are multiplying. All right, let's watch here. 4 times 5 to 20. 5 times 0 is 0 plus 2. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. 5 times 1 is 5. Go ahead and erase. Place value holder. You got a 0 here. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 0 is 0 plus 1. 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and then I have 4 times 1 is 4. Go ahead and add these up. I have a 0, I have an 8, I have a 6, I have an 8, I have a 10, and I have a 5. Two numbers are after the decimal. Boom. So my answer is 5,086.80. All right. We aren't done, though. This is what the volume would be if we had a cylinder. And what I mean by that here is if this was a cylinder, the cone would fit in that cylinder. But we have all this extra space, don't we, kids, that we don't want to count because we are trying to find this cone here. So we have to divide it by 3. So this big number that we just worked on right here, we have to divide it by 3. Like I said, it's a lot of room um, for a mistake when you're working on this. A lot of room for error, so watch closely. I'm going to divide this by 3. Close attention to the decimals here. I'm just going to put the decimal right up there so I don't mistake that. How many times, give myself some room, can 3 go into 5? 3 goes into 5 one time. 3 times 1 is 3. I'm going to subtract, I get a 2. I'm going to bring down the 0. How many times can 3 go on a 20? 3 times 6 is 18. I'm going to subtract, get a 2. Bring down this 8. How many times can 3 go on a 28? 3 times 9 is 27. I'm going to subtract, I'm going to get a 1. I'm going to bring down this 6. How many times can 3 go into 16? 3 goes into 16. 3 times 5 is 15. I'm going to subtract, I'm going to get a 1. I'm going to bring down this 8. 
How many times can three go into 18? It goes in there six times. Three times six is 18. I'm gonna give myself some more room. I'm gonna subtract, I get a zero. What number am I bringing down? I'm bringing a zero all the way down. Sorry, kids. Bring the zero all the way down. Three goes into zero, zero times. Subtract, get a zero. Better put that zero up here. because Three goes in there zero times. So my answer is 1,695.60. What's the number? 95.60. Then I have to find centimeters. So tomorrow in class, when you're working on this, I'm I'm gonna have um is this video playing on the TV, so you can kind of keep a close eye on all of these steps. There's a lot of math involved. Let's jump to see what a pyramid will look like. How are we gonna find a pyramid? So we have one right there. First of all, I have to find the area of the base. Which here, with the pyramid, it's a square pyramid. I don't have to do anything with 3.14, which is very convenient. Okay, So I'm just going to go 9 times 9 gives me 81. 81 is my base. Check. Base times height, 12 yards high. 81 times 12. 2, 16, place value holder. I've got a 1 and I've got an 8. I'm going to add this up. Yeah, two, seven, nine, 972 is what it would be if I had a cube. This makes sense, kids. But I don't. I have to divide this 972 by 3 because it's a pyramid. How many times can 3 go into 9? 3 goes in there 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract, get a 0, bring down the 7. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract, bring down the 2. 3 goes into 12, 4 times 12. Subtract, get a 0. 424, apologize, 324 <laughs> yards cubed. You'll notice that pyramids are a little easier because you don't have to deal with all the decimals in the 3.14. Now keep in mind, if this was to continue, make sure that we are adding zeros and we keep bringing them down. We want a decimal answer for the volumes of pyramids and cylinders. I don't want any remainders. I'm going to do one more example for you kids. And there's a reason why I'm going to do this next one here. And it is this one right here. Look at this one very carefully. It's a triangular pyramid. You're probably wondering why I'm showing this, and some of you are probably figured out why I'm showing it. The base is a triangle. Remember a triangle. It's the area of the base times the height times half. We have to divide this by two. So first off, to find the area of the base, we're going to be going four times 10, which gives me 40. But please keep in mind, it is a triangle. So the area of the base isn't 40. The area of the base is actually 20 because it's a triangle. Okay. Now let's keep going here. So we have 20 here. And what is my height? 20 times 9 is my height. It's 180. It's 180 if this was a triangular prism. It is not. It is a triangle pyramid. So we have to go 180. And we have to divide it by 3. 3 goes into 1, 0 times. 3 times 0 is 0. Subtract, I get a 1, I'm bringing down this 8. 3 goes into 18, 6 times. 3 times 6 is 18. I'm going to subtract, I get a 0, bring down the 0. 3 goes into 0, 0 times. 0, subtract, get a 0. 60 is my answer. Dealing with centimeters cubed. Now I'm just going to show you another cone really quick. I'm not going to solve the whole thing, but we're just going to kind of discuss it a little bit so we know what's going on. Let's take a look at this little tiny cone, okay? It looks delicious. All right. First of all, we have to find the area of the base. So how would I find the area of the base? Take a look at the close hint. It'd be 3 times 3, which would be 9 times 3.14. That would give me 
the area of the base, which would actually be here, would be the top. But obviously you could flip this upside down to make it look like a cone. Now once I solve that, the answer to number one, I would then have to multiply that by, because that would be my base, I'd have to multiply that by 1.5. Once I've multiplied that by 1.5, then you have to divide it by 3. The reason why we're dividing it by 3, kids, is because we aren't finding a cylinder. We're finding a cone. A cone is about one-third the size of a cylinder. Well, it is one-third the size. So you're going to divide that by 3. And remember to label it correctly. We're dealing with volume. You should realize that we're 3D shapes, so we'll be dividing it by 3. Tomorrow in class, I'll let you have a calculator. I do want you to show all your work on paper. And then I want you to check your work with the calculator. This will be the best practice for you, and you'll be ready to go. Hopefully this all made sense. Keep in mind, if you're dealing with the triangle pyramid, you have to divide that base by 2. Keep in mind, if you're doing anything with a circular base, you're using 3.14. All right, good luck. Hopefully this video helped, and I look forward to working with you in class tomorrow.